Welcome to today's special edition of COVID-19 Update with Chairman Dr. Ramona Jackson-Jones of the Douglas County Board of Commissioners and Dr. Janet Meemark, District Director of Cobb and Douglas Public Health. I'm Rick Martin, Director of Communications and Community Relations for the Douglas County Board of Commissioners. Thank you for joining us today. We've got something special and it's very informative. We'd like to begin with some brief remarks from Chairman Jones. Chairman Jones. Thank you so much, uh, Director of Communications, Rick Martin. Uh, to every citizen in Douglas County, thank you for joining my COVID-19 update on this December 29th, 2021. Again, I'm Dr. Ramona Jackson Jones, the chairwoman of the Douglas County Board of Commissioners. And I hope and pray everybody is safe during this holiday season. Due to the high surge with the Omicron and Delta variants, it is vitally important that every citizen in Douglas County is fully ed educated and equipped with the safety uh, and protective precautionary measures as we continue to fight this ongoing virus. Douglas County and the United States at large has come far in our fight against the virus and we are now more prepared than ever than before. Our public health tools in Douglas County are plentiful as we continue to fight this virus from all angle, angles. As we head into the winter months, we have begun to experience an extremely high uptick in the number of COVID-19 cases in Douglas County related primarily to the Omicron and Delta variants. With the holiday season upon us, or should I say we are in the midst of it, we are experiencing quite a significant surge of infections, COVID-19 infections. Our local testing sites are bursting at the seams. Our, our public health officials have reported record number high of tests that have occurred within the last two days. And currently our two largest testing sites here in Douglas County is Deer Lake Park uh, at our site there. And then also we have our uh, Cobb Douglas Public Health site, which is at the uh, Sears in the Sears parking lot at the Arbor Place Mall, the old Sears parking lot. Um, it is quite a, a, a travesty to see so many cars line up uh, to receive testing. So I'm urging all our citizens at this time to please just be aware, uh, make sure that you are doing the right thing at the right time right now with this variant upon us, upon us. It is my understanding that the National Guard will be deploying medics uh, to the state of Georgia and Douglas County uh, will be part of that uh, deployment process. And the uh, National Guard will be assisting with CEF, uh, the CEF testing model and Dr. Meemark uh, will elaborate on that a little later in her presentation. Effective immediately under the direction of our fire and EMS uh, director, uh, the fire and EMS uh, department, and when I say director, that's our medical director, uh, the fire and EMS department will operate under the CDC crisis mode guidelines, which essentially means that if a fire and EMS personnel are asymptomatic or display mild symptoms, um, whether they're vaccinated or unvaccinated or boosted, they can continue to work without restrictions. However, there are implications for quarantining uh, at this time. The fire and EMS staff are required to wear, wear N95 mask, full face respirators with filters and the use of stringent decontamination efforts. Meanwhile, upon entry of all county government buildings, masks are required and temperature checks are required, along with social distancing and very rigorous hand washing hygiene. I would like to personally thank the Douglas County Board of Commissioners, our elected officials, constitutional officers, department heads, and more importantly, the citizens of Douglas County for your resilience and commitment to succumb this unprecedented virus. Also, I would like to thank our fellow municipal partners, uh, the city of Douglasville, the city of Villarica and Austell, our state and federal partners, 
And I want to, to assure Governor Kemp and President Biden that Douglas County is fully aligned with the plan of fighting this virus while maximizing our safety measures, while considering and preserving this economy. The plan includes the following for our citizens. This plan includes, number one, we were booster for all adults. Number two, vaccinations to protect our kids and keep our schools open. Number three, expanding free at home testing for Americans. And this is the plan. This is a national plan and Douglas County is adopting as much as we can at this time. Uh, number four is stronger public health protocols for safe international travel. Number five is protections in workplace to keep our economy open. Number six is rapid response teams to help battle rising cases. Number seven is supplying our treatment pills to help prevent hospitalizations and deaths. And number eight is continued commitment to global vaccinations efforts. And number nine is steps to ensure we are prepared for all scenarios. With no further ado, certainly the purpose of this town hall meeting is to uh, equip our citizens with all the information and educate you as much as possible during this uh, surge that we have upon us. And I've asked our Dr. Meemark to come in, but I would, what I will do is yield back to our Director of Communications, Rick Martin, and he will certainly introduce our public health uh, official and our Director of Cobb Douglas Public Health, Dr. Janet Meemark. Rick Martin, you have the floor to introduce our uh, speaker today, and she has a wealth and breadth of information for the citizens of Douglas County. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Jones. Thank you very much. Um, like many of you are familiar with uh, Dr. Meemark, she has been tirelessly providing information and details to the public and for all of Cobb and Douglas public health. Um, so, uh, I understand, Dr. Meemark, uh, you have a PowerPoint presentation, I believe, that could bring us up with the latest data to provide for the public. Yes, and um, thank you for having me here, Madam Chair and um, Rick. I will uh, give you as many updates as I can. What we're seeing here is really, um, like the Madam Chair has said, is, is just quite unprecedented. Um, when I did this, these slides about a week ago, we were at 160 cases for 100,000. You see where we're at now, we're at 1,388 um, cases per 100,000. That's just a tremendous jump. And remember 100 cases is considered high transmission. Um, when you look over on that graph on the right, you can see how each of our surges have played out. The most recent one that July through um, November time, um, was the Delta surge. And then you see, you see those dotted lines that are kind of right past that 14 day window there. That is what we're looking at right now. And so um, the, they're all putting in all the numbers there, but the state just told us that we blew past our highest numbers in the pandemic, which was April of last year. And, um, and we are, we're gonna have some record numbers of cases, unfortunately. When you look at the positivity rate, um, this also was um, fairly, was much lower when I did this um, a week ago. We're at 28.6%. Um, that is of all the PCR tests that are being done, they are coming back um, with almost um, a third that are positive. This is, this is definitely an undercount. This is of people that are able to get tests, first of all, and does not include any of those home tests that people are doing. So definitely an undercount. Um, so we have some very, very high numbers. Um, when you look back at the previous um, surges, you can see that um, it, it, it rivals what we have seen um, at, the, at our big surges. Hospitals are very full right now. And so we have seen more than a doubling of cases in a, in a week for um, our area hospitals. And so you can see here, this is um, the state of Georgia and this is throughout the entire pandemic, but you can see um, on the end, on the right end of both graphs, you can see the uptick in the numbers that are going up. And so 
this, um, it's interesting for this one uh, and very scary. When you look at those curves for the cases, you know, you, you kind of had an upsloping, downslope, upslope, downslope. What we're seeing with this one is you're going, you're like, you had a slight upslope slope, and then it just shot straight up. So the cases are um, transmitting very, very, very quickly and easy to transmit these. And so you can see at the bottom there, and this is um, publicly available, the status for Douglas Hospital, Wells Fargo Douglas, it's in severe sat status and they're on diversion for the emergency room and ICU and CCU care. And so ambulances are not accepting from other places um, to go into um, uh, the hospital for that, but you can still walk in or drive in um, as needed, but extremely, extremely busy. When you look at the, our next slide here, this is the variant slide, and this is what's showing our region, the Southeast region. Um, you know, when I had done this presentation previously, we had had, it was just orange. Every block was orange, 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 right? Then all of a sudden, you know, about a week and a half ago, we had a small bit of purple that showed up, which was Omicron. Everything else was in the sea of Delta. Then all of a sudden, we just started getting these massive, massive numbers of Omicron coming through. So we went from, you know, just a few weeks ago to it was less than 1%. And now our region is at 78% that's Omicron. Uh, Madam Chair had, had described this very well, that this is a, a tale of two variants at this time. So before the holiday has started, the Christmas holiday, we were seeing an uptick already. And that was thought to be Delta at that time. And then, you know, because we had never stamped out the Delta variant and it, it just lingered in the community. Well, it gave it enough opportunity. And then, you know, people's vaccines started to, immunity started to go down a little bit. It took advantage of that, like lightning fast. And so we had Omicron come at the same time and, and Delta. And so right now we do see a lot of Omicron um, in the community, but we do feel like there's a lot of Delta out there as well. There are a lot of people that are being admitted to the hospital that are very sick right now. And so there is a suspicion that we have both um, variants that are operating at the same time. Here's the um, vaccination status. And so when we look at Douglas County, 51% have received their first dose and 46 have gotten fully vaccinated. When you look at that additional, the booster dose, uh, we're only at 13%. And why that is so important is that um, we have new guidelines and new data that's coming out showing that um, your um, immunity really starts to wane at um, four to six weeks. And so now the new guidelines that you'll find on the DPH website um, are showing that um, you know, your, uh, your isolation guidelines and quarantine guidelines will be different at whether you are boosted or not or fully vaccinated. So it's very important at this point now um, to, to get fully vaccinated and get the booster, unfortunately. So that booster is providing will double your um, immunity. So it's very important that everybody get their booster shots as well. Here are the locations that the, the state um, and, and one of our community partners has provided um, for Douglas County for testing. And so we have these two, but I wanted to remind people that these are not the only two locations for testing. And so there are, if you go over on a DPH website, I put the um, web link there, you can find a lot more other sites. And, and we have to utilize some commercial sites right now to help out during this surge. There are very, very long lines. And, um, we'll talk a little bit more about what the state is doing to try to help bolster some of the testing throughout. Remind folks that, um, you know, what's going to really help in this right now is everything that we've been doing and know to do, right? To, that, you know, if you wear your mask, that helps against all variants. Washing your hands and keeping your distance are also very important things to do. But let's add on to that. We've got to make sure that we're vaccinated and that we're also getting the booster as well. So, you know, people can, um, anybody five and over can get the vaccinations and 16 and over can get the booster shots. So it's very important that everybody um, do their parts and um, make sure you're vaccinated. And I'll take any questions, Rick. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Um, in terms of questions, um, I have a few um, that I like to, you know, really share. You know, Dr. Me, Mark, how surprised are you? at how fast Omicron has spread across our community. 
No, I'm, I'm unfortunately I'm not terribly surprised only because we saw what happened in other um, nations that got hit with it. United Kingdom was probably a, a similar model, but uh, they were actually more vaccinated than um, than we are. And then we had it um, blow through New York as well, right? Um, I think what I'm surprised about, I'm not surprised by how fast Omicron has spread. Um, I am surprised about um, the fact that we have Delta and Omicron at the same time. And I think that's um, very unfortunate. Um, Delta actually has more um, severe effects upon people. And then when you layer on Omicron, and then if you wanna really you know, bring your day down, you can think about the flu and we can layer that on because we are seeing increased flu activity as well. You know, one of the questions that I know that surfing the web and social media, is it true that the symptoms from Omicron are milder than the other variants? Yeah, so that is what we're seeing is that um, severity is milder in Omicron. Um, people um, are not um, getting as sick um, as they were with the Delta variant. Now, here's the problem. I know that people are out there saying, oh, you know, it's not it's not that bad. And, you know, the symptoms are mild and maybe like the common cold. But, you know, the problem is, is that there are still people that still will get very sick with this. And if you have, you know, I have almost a million people in my district. If everybody gets it at the same time and in the face of Delta, then we have a problem. And so you'll see what's happening in our hospitals and you know, even our critical infrastructure, um, these, you know, our, our people are getting the, the virus as well. And so um, you can see when it happens at the same time, there's, there are very bad effects that happen kind of ripple across the board because of that. You know, you've touched on it during your presentation, but is there any more you can tell us about COVID testing right now? Yeah, so I know COVID testing is very difficult right now. There are so many people that want to get tested and, um, and it, it's very hard to accommodate everybody at the same time. And so we have our testing sites and you also have your home test you can do. Um, but then also um, the state is working on bolstering um, the sites that, the, that, that are state run. So that would be the one at Arbor Place Mall. Um, Chairwoman uh, Jackson Jones mentioned about the National Guard. So they're working on calling them up to support these sites. Um, and so helping out with traffic control and many of these are self, um, you know, self swabs oftentimes. So um, you don't need as much medical support. So just supporting a lot of the, just the hours and hours of wait of people um, that will help. They are looking at other sites to put up as well, like big um, metro sites. The metro seems to be hit really, really hard with this. So we're looking at different sites so that we can accommodate more people and get more people tested. So I hear a lot of people are using at-home COVID tests. Are they accurate? Can you speak to the accuracy of those tests? Yeah, so you know those tests are pretty good. So if you use them correctly, um, you can get up to 85% effectiveness on those tests. So, so that's one thing. Um, what they are finding though at times is that you kind of have to, um, you don't do it right away. So like right when you, you know, get in contact with somebody or right when you show um, symptoms, you have to wait a couple of days for your body to produce some um, antigens and an immune and for the virus to replicate. And then when you take the test, then you know, you'll get a better response because this one actually responds to um, the actual um, you know, uh, virus um, pieces that are being produced. So they're pretty good though. Gotcha, thank you. So New Year's Eve is just around the corner. Do people need to cancel their plans? Yeah, so New Year's Eve is tough. I know that we, you know, we have Christmas and Thanksgiving that we've all gone through, but um, you know, I saw a, a, a quote recently that said, oh, if you have your New Year's Eve party, um, Omicron and Delta will be coming. And so uh, unfortunately, I feel like that that's gonna be true. Here's, here's one of the problems with this. Um, a lot of people that are already vaccinated are getting it, okay? And so, and I have seen so many people that I know that are already vaccinated with that two dose and they are getting breakthrough infections. We are seeing many, many, many breakthrough infections. So you cannot feel safe, you know, with just your two shots. And so if you, you know, if you're going, I would try to keep it to your tight knit group of people. Do not go to large groups uh, because that you're just asking to, 
get sick or to, you know, get somebody else sick. Uh, so, you know, please exercise caution. If you can be outside, you know, the weather has been really uh, nice. And I know it's supposed to rain through the, <laughs> this weekend, but, uh, you know, try to do all those things that are, that um, we know to be safer because it, it is going to be a problem. I promise you it will be if you, if you do a large gathering. Wow. What about vaccinations? Is there any new guidance to talk about regarding vaccinations? Yes, and so this is very important. So what we're learning about Omicron and Delta, and even just, you know, the vaccines themselves, is that your vaccine immunity seems to go down about that four to six month mark. And so that's why they have new guidelines in place. So if you have the, the, um, the vaccine and you don't get the booster, well, then you're gonna not quite be considered fully vaccinated, right? There's gonna be new guidelines. So now the most protected will be the person that gets the um, two dose series and plus the booster at about six months or the Johnson and Johnson and two months get the booster shot. And so you're gonna have different guidelines. So you're gonna get treated different, differently if you only got the two dose um, mRNA or the one dose of the Johnson and Johnson. And then even differently if you're unvaccinated. So please go to the DPH website. This actually just hit this morning. Um, so we all received the new guidance. And so it's being updated, but it will be on their website. Um, so you can try to sort out all the new changes. But it's fully, it seems like you're going to get the most protection by getting that booster. Wow, that's great. At this time, I want to check in with Chairman Jones um, to see if she had any questions or so for you, Dr. Meemar. Madam Chair. Thank you so much, um, Communications Director Rick Martin. And thank you, Dr. Newmark, for taking the time of your schedule today and take this town hall on a moment's notice. I had a question regarding the home testing that's available. Uh, certainly, you know, you are tracking um, uh, the data. I'm just wondering, with, with the home testing being admitted, with the test being administered at home, what is the plan for public health in terms of tracking who's positive and who's not? You know, before you could tell because everything was generated from the public health uh, perspective. What are, what are you? What are your plans or what are your thoughts around data? Yeah. So um, on the home test, you know, unless somebody reports it to us, um, it it actually gets reported differently. So you know, if you think about it, we don't have any way to track people's home tests. So they are asking that you report it, but it gets recorded differently. Does it? The the ones that we see with those curves are just the PCR testing. So so that's um, the one thing. But I know down the pipeline, the president has um, issued. Um, uh, millions of um, home tests to be issued out. And so we are actually waiting for that guidance and I heard it'll be in January. And so everybody just keep watching out for that because it's gonna be a model where you actually go online and you order the test and then they'll be delivered to your house. And so it actually won't go through us, but it will be um, through the federal government and then you can order that way. So it's important to, to, to do that, but it's important that when you take those tests, you have to take it seriously and, and you know, use the guidance to so go back to public health and see what the guidance is if you're positive. Make sure you took it at the right time. We talked about not taking it too early, but you know, make sure you take it at the right time. But here's the other thing. Even if you don't have COVID and you have some symptoms, you don't be going around other people, okay? We have flu activity and we have some really bad just respiratory viruses out there. I'm sure you all know, um, I have run into lots of people that are having severe sinusitis and, and it goes down into their lungs and gets bronchitis and coughing. We're seeing a lot of that. Don't be spreading that to people either because that can be worse than Omicron or COVID at times. And it can hospitalize people as well that, that may have some conditions that can't handle that. So let's just think about that. It's not just um, COVID out there. We have a lot of viruses that you can potentially give to other people. So please try to stay at home when you're having any symptoms. Thank you so much, Dr. Meemark. If you could speak to some of uh, these new CDC guidelines, I believe the, the, um, the quarantine period has changed uh, according to those new guidelines from 14 days now, I believe five days. Can you uh, just share what your thoughts are, if just the, if you could enlighten the Douglas County citizens about the new guidelines for CDC. 
regarding yeah, quarantine. Yeah, yeah. So um, there's a there's a lot of details involved with that. Okay, so you have to go back and parse it out. Like there, I mean, apparently there are multiple steps. So you know whether you are vaccinated or unvaccinated makes a difference. But um, it's looking like so if you um, if you have an infection with with COVID. Um, you can, from the first day of having your symptoms or first day of that test, if you have no symptoms, you can um, isolate for five days. Now, here's the caveat. You cannot have any more symptoms. You cannot be released if, if you have any symptoms. And so, and that could take more than two weeks if you have, if it lingers a long time. And so it's all those symptoms, you know, coughing, congestion, runny nose, fever, diarrhea, vomiting, um, headaches. There are a lot of symptoms on there. So you cannot be released until you have all your symptoms go away. And another thing I just want to add on, I know a lot of people are saying, oh, I probably just have allergies. I just have allergies. Right now, you should not be thinking that you have allergies at this point. Okay. This is, we are in a, in a, high surge right now with two variants that are operating. If you have any kind of symptoms, you need to isolate. And if you can get a test, get a test, but do not brush it off and say, I just have allergies or I just have you know, a virus or something like that. Please don't do that to other people. So, you know, cause you can pass those around. The signs are so subtle right now. And if you, you know, been out and about, you can get it. So please just remember that. Thank you so much, Dr. Neymar. Also, the uh, breakthroughs have been tremendous uh, within the last week or so uh, with those, um, with our citizens who are vaccinated. But I had a question about those who are unvaccinated. Will the Omicron, what do you think the effects of the Omicron, and I know Delta is one is pretty vicious, will it uh, have a huge effect on unvaccinated as well? And uh, could you speak to that and, and what your thoughts are in terms of encouraging vaccination to those who are unvaccinated to become vaccinated. Yeah, so our, our current belief would be that if you get Omicron, you know, you should, it, the sim symptoms should not be severe, is a thought, right? It is thought that if you have the vaccines or the boosters that you should be prevented from getting severe illness, like to be hospitalized or death. Um, we are still kind of, you know, it take a while to parse through all of this information and data that we have. But what we are seeing, though, in hospitalizations are that currently people that are hospitalized with COVID still remain mostly unvaccinated. It is over 70 percent that I'm seeing unvaccinated folks. And so it, you know, it has come down from that. Remember the 90 plus percent? but it's still majority are unvaccinated. So I just want everybody to kind of, to know that, you know what I mean? That we, we don't know, you know, if, you know, which one's gonna be mild and exactly how you're gonna respond, but we do know that most of the people in that hospital are unvaccinated. Okay, and then my next question for you, Dr. Meemar, is related to our pediatric population here in Douglas County and just Georgia at large and the United States at large. Certainly the vaccine is available to uh, starting at five years old and above, but I'm concerned about that population that's four and below uh, newborn. What are, what are your suggestions for those mothers and fathers who are concerned about their babies and what do we need to do? Tell us what we need to do to protect that population yeah, where there's no yeah. vaccine available. Yeah, so I mean, the only thing that you can do is just try your best to protect them. So you know the things that, that work, right? So during this time, if you cannot have them exposed as much as possible, but I know people have to work and, you know, and I know that, you know, uh, four-year-olds don't want to wear their masks and it's super hard. I, I, I recognize that. So, you know, you can just do the best you can, try to have them wash their hands and try to stay away from, you know, group activities. Um, if you can get them vaccinated with at least their flu shot, it's very important because that will help, in, you know, the situation. But, um, you know, a lot of times we can't protect, you know, do as much for that group. But thank God they should do all right, right? Because they're younger. But the problem is, is that they bring it home. They bring it home to our, our parents and our grandparents and aunts and uncles. And those folks are more vulnerable. So probably one of the best things that you can do is get everybody else vaccinated and boosted. We still have them free and we still we have a lot of availability to get those shots. So please, um, please protect yourselves. The kids should be should be OK. Just you just have to try your best. But for everybody else, you have a choice that you can make and you can go ahead and, and exercise that choice. 
And speaking of our um, aging population, uh, certainly I know that and that's the most vulnerable population at this time. Can you talk about your thoughts in the nursing homes? We do have a nursing home here in Douglas County. Uh, do you feel, what, what are you uh, urging us to do at this time to protect our uh, nursing home population? And also just uh, what's your thought, just give us your general thoughts if you could provide. Yeah, us. so that, that population is one that we worry about. They, they have gotten um, very high vaccination rates for their, um, their residents. Um, we're working on boosters, so, so um, with commercial vendors to help booster those folks up. Um, but you know, also healthcare workers is kind of the same thing. So um, getting them vaccinated and just reminding folks to get vaccinated. And then also when you go to visit, making sure you're you're doing those precautions and making sure you're vaccinated and boosted as well is really important because they're very vulnerable. Don't go if you have any symptoms or you know if you haven't been boosted up. Just try to protect those people as, as best you can. Dr. Meemar, I certainly share my heartfelt condolences for the citizens of Douglas County and their families, particularly our citizens that we've lost as a result of this virus. Uh, can you talk about our hospital capacity right now and what, what it looks like? What, what should we plan for? Uh, I know we should have ventilators available here. Are we pretty equipped? If you could just talk about just overall what you see in our hospitals at this time. Yeah, in my understanding right now, the hospitals are very, very busy. We showed, I showed you the little uh, clip showing that they have diversion going on at, um, mm -hmm. at uh, Wells Fargo Douglas. Um, but, um, you know, they have, they've more than doubled the number of COVID patients that they had, but um, they are, I mean, they're doing okay is my understanding right now. But um, one of the things that we have been told from area hospitals is that there are a lot of people that have um, no to very mild symptoms using the emergency rooms for testing. And we really cannot um, do that right now. So those emergency rooms are extremely busy trying to take care of very sick people. Um, so they have asked to go ahead and go to other places, um, you know, these commercial sites and testing locations, but, um, but they're having trouble because they got a lot of folks coming in trying to get tested at the emergency room. Thank you for that response. It's my understanding that some of the counties have deployed home testing uh, for their citizens. And certainly that's something that would be of interest for me and my administration. Had a question for you because I know you are uh, really the captain of the ship for our public health division here in Douglas County. Can you share if there are any thoughts for uh, testing, um, home testing too, so we could uh, maybe distribute testing to the houses here in Douglas? anything on that magnitude? Yeah, I asked about that to. yesterday for the state supply. Um, you know, we have some tests that go out to um, uh, people that have their lab certificates, unfortunately, and that's, it's FDA approved for that. Um, I asked if they had any home kits that we can distribute, and they said no. The One of the counties um, that I know of that did distribute, they actually had some from um, the NIH from a different grant previously, so they actually had some available that they were able to do, but yeah, um, hopefully soon. I mean, we're coming up January. Uh, the federal government will release um, tests uh, that we can order. Um, but yeah, it's it's been tough. We were told um, that there wasn't any home test within a hundred mile radius of us to get. So um, it's, they're very difficult to get. But um, I'm I'm really hoping the federal government will release some of those tests soon so we can all order them. Okay, thank you. That that that's good uh, news for Douglas County. Hopefully, in the near future. It's those tests, if we just have them read, readily available in our homes, it would help. Um, Dr. Me, Mark, you've answered all my questions and I'm sure certainly, I, I'm trying to just think of some that our citizens would ask at this time. Um, and those symptoms, if you could share some of those symptoms with our citizens. Yeah. Uh, related so, to the Omicron and the Delta, are they similar symptom, yeah. symptoms? Yeah, they're, they're quite similar, but there is a, a long list of them. So we know the ones like beginning with fevers, right? Um, but headaches and sore throat and having a runny nose or a stuffy nose, having diarrhea, um, coughing, shortness of breath, um, vomiting. Um, these are all included on that list. And so I want to make sure everybody knows and they are very similar to allergy symptoms, very similar to uh, flu and other viruses. But right now you should not be thinking it's just allergies. You should be thinking, do I have COVID? because cases are so extremely high right now, the highest we have ever seen. Wow. 
Well, you've answered this. Uh, most of my questions, I want to I'll yield back to our uh, communications director, Rick Martin. He may have thought of some more, but I believe I have one or two more. Rick, if you could just uh, lead in with some questions. Yeah, well, you know, at this time, too, I want to encourage that um, for anyone, members of the public, if they do have questions, they can feel free to just post them on our Facebook page. And we would you know, work to get the answers and get that information back to them, working with Common Douglas Public Health uh, as well. Um, you know, Dr. Meemark, one of the questions, I guess, is there anything else you would like to say to the residents of Douglas County? Yeah, and I know everybody is really, really tired right now. And we've um, all endured two years of this, uh, but, please, you know, for each of these surges, let's all come together and just kind of hunker down and let it just blow through. And um, just please try to help by taking some of these precautions that we've talked about. So, you know, um, you know, getting your vaccines and your boosters, which includes the flu vaccine um, and, you know, trying to wear your mask where you're in public. I know it's, it, everybody hates it and it's, and it's politicized, but, you know, we're not asking all the time, just as we go through these surges that we can, you know, try to, to keep everybody as safe as possible together. Um, but, you know, let's just, it, it doesn't happen all the time. I know, I know it kind of feels that way, but if we all just come together just for a little bit, this should blow through in just a few weeks. So um, however much that we can help um, will we'll be tremendous. And, you know, Dr. Meemark and Chairman Jones, if I may share something with the public as well, it's holiday time, it's holidays. Um, and sometimes we're going to have to make difficult decisions. And I wanna let the public know that, you know, we, at, me personally as a citizen, um, had to go through the same difficult decision. Uh, we had plans to visit my parents, uh, who uh, thankfully are still alive uh, up north. And we had plans to take my kids to go see their grandparents, who they haven't seen in three years and in two years. And it was a difficult decision. But based on just, you know, Omicron and how these variants are spreading through wildfire, we found other means to um, communicate and, and, and enjoy or embrace the holiday season, you know, through frequent chats, through video chats, through conversations as well. So, you know, the decisions um, that come about with keeping uh, safety as a priority I wanna encourage everyone to please seek that and, and do what we can for the community um, and encourage communication, you know, talk about it. If you're feeling a certain way from not visiting your family or your parents, talk about it, have that conversation. You'll feel much better and both sides will be able to at least understand. So those are my two cents um, and a little bit of wisdom. Uh, Madam Chair, I don't know if you wanted to say any few remarks, any more remarks, or ask any questions before we close? I do, I have just one more that I forgot to uh, ask Dr. Meemark, and it was related to animals. I, you know, we do have animal lovers and I do love pets and all of us love, Are will they be affected by this virus by any chance? And that's the question from one of the residents that had asked me and I said, I would certainly ask you, Dr. Meemark. Uh, so that's a great question. Um, uh, yeah, we have seen a lot of animal cases that, of COVID, so from tigers and minxes and, um, and apes, um, but, um, you know, I, I guess it is possible. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Um, you know, you just kind of do the best that you can, um, but and it is possible, but I don't think that we've seen anything really severe in animals, um, but, um, but I, I, it is possible is my answer. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Meemark. Well, um, thank you so much, Dr. Meemark, for certainly providing us an update uh, regarding COVID-19 as it pertains to Douglas County and, to state at, and the state at large. Uh, Rick Martin, I thank you for fielding the questions today uh, to uh, Dr. Meemark. And I would like to thank every Douglas County citizen for taking the time to just uh, appeal or to, to come out and to listen uh, to all the things that are going on uh, related to the surge. 
I thank you for uh, allowing me to appeal to you today uh, with extreme uh, uh, dedication and commitment to your safety and want you, if you could, I know you're ready for the holiday. I'm, we all excited about New Year's 2022. Unfortunately, we will be taking this virus with us. I thought maybe we would leave it behind, but it's going with us, but we are a resilient county. We, uh, what was will never be again. This is historical for Douglas County and the globe at large. So I would like to just again, thank you, uh, the, um, Dr. Meemark and Rick Martin, and also the citizens of Douglas County for just being who you are. And I wish you a happy, happy new year and please stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.